Hawaii brings to mind the world famous beach at Waikiki or Diamond Head looming up on the horizon or the sleek modern hotels along the shore in Honolulu. But tonight we're going to see another side of this tropical state, this island vacation paradise that abounds in scenic beauty, deserted stretches of sandy beach and rugged wild cliffs that rise out of the sea. This is your vacation and mine to places in Hawaii that many visitors never see, the Outer Islands. First stop on our vacation to the Outer Islands of Hawaii is the small town of Lahaina on the island of Maui. Offshore, the passenger liner Lurleen, the White Queen of the Pacific, has dropped anchor, and from this point, her passengers are taken aboard a large launch for the ride into harbor, where a typical Hawaiian welcome greets them at the Lahaina dock. Six lovely girls performing a traditional native dance. Well, now for some excitement. It's called the Lahaina Whaling Spree. And by the time we've reached Main Street, this parade celebrating the history of the one-time whaling capital of Hawaii is in full swing. Now here's some of the highlights. A marching band of U.S. Marines, three bearded characters right out of the island's history, a detailed replica of a four-masted whaling ship, and a sight guaranteed to hold the attention of any youngster, a couple of ferocious-looking Chinese dragons. Well, during this three-day celebration, everyone in town joins in the fun. There are children dressed as pirates, sword fights in the middle of the street, bearded seamen everywhere, and a truck outfitted to look like a whale. One of the biggest events that's sure to draw a crowd is the beard growing contest, and it attracts a large group of the whiskered gents, and each one must display his carefully nurtured beard before the admiring throng of spectators. Now, in a contest such as this, there are several classifications. For instance, one of the divisions is known as full beard with mustache. Another is full beard without mustache. And still another is called mustache only. Well, the big moment is at hand. The winner is announced, and here he is, Mr. Robert Bruce. His prize is this handsome trophy and 100 silver dollars. Today, Lahaina's shopping district looks like this, but nearby stand the old courthouse on the right and the Pioneer Inn in the background. The inn was a favorite gathering place for whalers off the big ships that stopped here over a century ago. But many a seafaring man found himself languishing behind these stone walls after a night of wild drinking at the old hotel, for this was the prison at Lahaina. Nearby grows the largest banyan tree in all Hawaii. The Baldwin House is one of Lahaina's most interesting historic buildings. It was well known even in the days when the American missionaries from the New England states were changing the thoughts and habits of Hawaii's people. We asked Mr. Larry Windley to tell us more about Baldwin House. Yes, you're presently now in the missionary home of the Reverend Dwight Baldwin. It is one of the oldest existing buildings on Maui. This building was started in the year 1833 and completed in 1835. Different increments were put on the house in the 1840s and again in the 1846. It is one of our restoration projects of the Lion Restoration Foundation. This is one of many projects as director of research and restoration that I am presently uh, doing here in Lahaina. This is the original medical case used by Dr. Baldwin in his treatment of the natives on Maui and the surrounding islands. And after a long day's work, he would sit on his front porch and play this wooden flute. And one of his children, a boy, slept in this antique bed. Dr. Dwight Baldwin, truly an American pioneer in Hawaii. The beaches of Maui are noted for their unspoiled beauty, and we came across a father and son whiling away an afternoon as they fished from a rocky promontory surrounded on three sides by the churning water of the sea. 
One of Maui's most scenic spots is the Iao Valley State Park. In a surrounding of verdant mountains crowned with white clouds, we can stand on a small footbridge and get an excellent view of the park. As we look up from the rocky stream bed of a freshwater creek, our gaze travels over ground that must look very much as it did when the first Polynesians lived in this land. And adding to the appearance of this uncorrupted refuge is the needle, a stone pinnacle that rises 120 feet above the floor of the valley. High on a mountainside in the southeastern section of Maui, we're in the Haleakala National Park. At an elevation of 10,000 feet, the ground is dotted with gray-green silver sword plants. This unusual looking species of the sunflower family, by the way, is found nowhere else in the world. And it grows near the awe-inspiring grandeur of Haleakala Crater. This great sweep of volcanic ash and lava was left when the immense volcano called House of the Sun erupted hundreds of years ago. That plane in the background is just one of many that is available to visitors who want to save time by using an air taxi service. And it's bringing us to the island of Molokai, just northwest of Maui. In the mountainous eastern part of the island, we stopped by for a visit with a gentleman who wouldn't leave Molokai for all the proverbial tea in China. He's Mr. William Karstens, and we asked him to tell us about his favorite island. Molokai is roughly about 30 miles long by 10 miles wide, comprising approximately 250 square miles, and has a population of a little over 5,000 people. The main industries are uh, pineapple and cattle ranching, and uh, even though uh, it is seemingly a remote island, after all, it's only 20 or 25 minutes by air from Honolulu, and I just love it. Next, we asked Mr. Karstens how he spends his time here. Well, being an electrical contractor by profession, I've naturally learned uh, different trades during my life. That is enough of them that uh, I can do a little of this and a little of that. And when I get up in the morning, I can uh, put on my rock man's hat or my electrician's hat or carpenter's hat or gardener's hat and uh, go on and do what, uh, I ever, whatever I like to do. However, there'll be other times possibly that I don't want to do anything. And when that time comes, I don't put on any cap. I just take it easy. Thank you, Mr. William Karstens. Another satisfied resident of Molokai is the man wearing the plaid shirt. He's Mr. George Murphy, and he's the owner of a handsome new hunting lodge located on his 14,000 acre Huohoku Ranch. Guests at the lodge can enjoy horseback riding or jeep tours over the rolling green hills and valleys of this magnificent private kingdom. And for the hunter, these mountain meadows abound in deer, pheasant, and wild pigs. The huge spread is also home to a herd of Charlet cattle, one of the finest beef producing breeds in the world. The Murphy herd numbers about 1,500 head and cattle such as this one have won many championships in stock shows all over America. Its name is Nutmeg Ethan Allen, a winner of dozens of blue ribbons. And by the way, Nutmeg tops the scales at a mere 1,800 pounds. From the green terrain and shadowed canyons of the Pouahoku Ranch, we move to the northeast tip of Molokai. Here we find the sacred Kokui Grove. Its trees were planted over the grave of a priest who was noted for his skill in healing the sick. Leaving the rugged shores of Molokai, we move on to an airfield on the island of Kauai. We're going aboard an Hawaiian Airlines plane for an aerial view of some of the most scenic locations on this lovely spot that's called the Garden Island. Here are several of these noteworthy sites. Kauai's coastline washed by a blue-green sea. The Hanapepe Valley partly in shadow because of the heavy clouds overhead. The rocky ridges of the Waimea Valley 
often compared to the formations of Arizona's Grand Canyon, the breathtaking majesty of the Nepali cliffs, the deeply eroded canyons and lava walls that form the Valley of the Lost Tribe, the foaming white Wailua Falls, the strikingly modern Kauai Surf Hotel, and one of Hawaii's natural wonders, the Spouting Horn, and the green carpet of the Hanalei Valley. Way, it was along this unspoiled stretch of coastline that a Hollywood film studio made the movie version of South Pacific. A few moments ago, we saw the spouting horn from the air. This phenomenon of nature is caused by ocean waves being forced through lava tubes and then spurting out in a fountain of salt spray on the rocks. This action of the water causes air to be forced out of the hole, and the resulting sound is quite unusual. Listen. At Waimea Canyon State Park, we can see some of the most spectacular scenery in the Hawaiian Islands. And as I said earlier, this deep gorge with its multicolored walls is called Hawaii's Grand Canyon. The area surrounding it is known as the wettest spot on Earth, and every year torrents of rainwater pour down the mountainsides, causing further erosion in this chasm of waterfalls and rain sculptured rock. The canyon is 2,857 feet deep, and from this viewpoint, we can see endless miles of brown, green, and pink formations made even more beautiful by the play of light and shadow cast by the afternoon sun. Waimea Canyon, a spot of splendor, will not soon forget. The same rains that have carved out the jagged crevices of Waimea Canyon also feed the lush growth that covers much of these volcanic islands. In the meadows between the mountains, plant life grows unchecked, nourished by rainfall that may vary from 20 inches a year to as much as 600 inches. On the slopes of Mount Waialiali, the average is 476 inches per year. But after the rain comes one of the most perfect rainbows we've ever seen. And in the distance, a waterfall that looks just as primitive and pure as it must have been when white men first landed here and came ashore to discover this paradise of the Pacific. At the Kauai Surf Hotel, they tell us that there are no islanders anywhere who are prouder of their heritage than the people of this island. Every day at dusk, these young men reenact the torch lighting ceremony that dates back to the time of King Kamehameha and the other Hawaiian monarchs who ruled these islands. The sound of a shell from the sea is carried on the wind and the people of Kauai listen and remember. That same evening, we dropped by the home of Mr. Nelson Waikiki. He's the gentleman wearing the flowered shirt, and he's one of the most popular entertainers in the islands. Now he sings for us a folk song about two little ships caught on a reef near Kauai. The title of the song is Hula Omaki. Let's listen. <laughs> Western shore in the town of Kailua, there stands an old church that dates back to those historic days of the 1830s when the native Hawaiians were being introduced to the ways of Christianity. This building was erected in 1838 and it was the first Christian church on the Big Island. And here, clergymen from America, members of the Sandwich Island Mission, struggled to teach these unsophisticated people the word of the Bible. The sign reads, To Place of Refuge. And hundreds of years ago, this was a sanctuary for vanquished warriors and women and children 
who came here to escape the terror of tribal wars. These thick stone walls, put together without mortar, offered protection to anyone who was able to reach this sacred place. And even a man or woman who had defied the kapu, or native law, was safe from punishment. Throughout the islands, there were several other places of refuge, but this one on Hawaii was considered to be the most important. These palm-shaded grounds were presided over by native priests who lived here and worshipped their gods in temples made of lava rock. At first glance, this beach looks like many others in the Hawaiian Islands, but on closer inspection, we discover a surprising difference in the color of the sand. Look carefully and you'll see that it's black. Indeed, they call this place Black Sands Beach, and it was formed centuries ago by the action of waves pounding against lava left from the eruption of volcanoes. The resulting black sand is soft and smooth to the touch and blows out of your hand like dust. Nearby, there are many places where we can see massive formations left by the flow of lava that poured across the land until it finally reached the ocean. Now it lies as though frozen in purple black swirls and still the salt water eats away at it and slowly the ancient rock succumbs to the relentless sea. About 38 miles south of Hilo on the Big Island along the Chain of Craters Highway we stop at Makaopui Crater. It drops to a depth of 705 feet and steam is still rising from vents inside the volcano. The steam is caused by rainwater seeping into the earth until it reaches hot lava beds. It then rises through fissures in the form of water vapor. Driving further into Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, we pause to look at more steam that's rising from an area covered with ferns and small trees. And believe me, this is a unique experience Unique because as we stood here, we knew that somewhere beneath us, hidden in the earth, was a crevice laced with fiery lava. And this is about as close as I want to get to a sleeping volcano. In sharp contrast is this area of bare ground with a stand of naked trees that have a ghost-like look about them. The park ranger is Mr. William Rabenstein, and as we surveyed this area that's almost devoid of any living thing, we wondered how long it had been like this and what caused it. Ranger Rabenstein. The devastation area that I'm presently in, prior to November 14, 1959, was a lush Ohia forest. But on the morning of November 14th, a tremendous eruption was born. Over in this area here, a small whiff of smoke was noted. And from that point, a tremendous fountain grew, reaching heights of molten magma being shot into the air 1,900 feet, about at that angle. That is roughly one and a half times as high as the Empire State Building. This fountain spewed out tremendous quantities of pumice that you see around us, and today, the park visitor can walk over the boardwalks and to see these tremendous effects that a volcanic eruption can have on the surrounding areas. Thank you, Mr. Rabenstein. What a stark beauty is here in this devastated area. Nearby at the steaming caldera of the Kilauea crater, we find the main vent of this immense volcano of the same name. Incidentally, in the Hawaiian language, Kilauea means rising smoke cloud. And as our eyes travel over the gigantic depression of its crater, we can only stand in awe of the terrible power that lies temporarily dormant beneath the surface. At Hilo, on the east coast of the island of Hawaii, this great brown stone sits on the lawn in front of the Hawaii County Library. It's called the Naha Stone, and legend says that King Kamehameha once overturned it by the sheer force of his brute strength. At Kong's Florally Gardens, also in Hilo, we find some of the delicately colored orchids and other flowers that are so much a part of this most tropical of America's 50 states. Here are just a few. A group of pink and lavender Vanda orchids. 
This Vanda is named the Nellie Morley. Hybrids with their mottled leaves. The large Catalea. The unusual looking pineapple orchid. The beauty of blooming red ginger. And the brilliant wax-like flowers called anthuriums. Kong's Gardens in Hilo. Be sure to see it. This looks like a scene in a primitive rainforest, doesn't it? Well, this waterfall and a view are only five minutes by car from the business district in Hilo. It's hard to believe, but it's just another surprise in this magnificent state that abounds in natural wonders. This is Rainbow Falls, and at Akaka Falls State Park, 25 miles north of Hilo, a white torrent of water pours over the edge of a green-mantled cliff and drops to a distance of 420 feet. At the bottom, it churns up a cloud of vapor that drifts over the surrounding rainforest in a veil of silvery beauty. There's this and more when you visit the out to enjoy golf, the islands offer a variety of excellent courses. We're going to quickly visit just three of them and they were all designed and laid out by Robert Trent Jones, the world's foremost designer of golf courses. This is the Kaanapali Golf Course on the island of Maui. And on the island of Hawaii at the Mauna Kea Beach Hotel with its elegant looking buildings and typically Polynesian decor, we found one of the most inviting sun-drenched beaches we've ever seen anywhere. And to top it all, they have a golf course that is ranked by experts as one of the great seaside courses of the world. Near Honolulu, the gateway to the outer islands, the silhouette of Diamond Head looms up behind the Waialai Golf Course. Its carefully manicured greens are dotted with graceful palms, making it a perfect setting for a round of golf. We happen to stop by during the annual Open Invitational Golf Tournament with a prize of $50,000 to the winner. Well, whether you're a pro or just a hacker like me, you couldn't pick a more gorgeous spot than this to play 18 holes. For here, there is a combination of a splendidly designed course, warm sunshine, and sea air. That combination is tough to beat, but easy to find in the Outer Islands. 